layer eight. So we are going to go ahead and add our pencil tones to our knowledge and skills, core skills, uh, learning math. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you how to demonstrate that. If you haven't done it already, this is a great way for you to just watch a quick video and just know what you need to do. And I have a final clip of everything as well when it's finally done. So for pencil shading, it's really good to just start off with a little bit of pressure and then build that pressure by pressing your pencil deeper and deeper in. And once you've got a nice amount of dark tones, start using that circular motion and press your pencil out. And as you do it, remember to lift your pencil. And you will leave a little bit of that pressure and you'll get a variety of tones. So I'm going to go ahead and take it all the way down. But look how I'm taking it down and I don't take it I don't move on until most of the gaps are filled there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Press my pencil just on the edge here. Use small circular motions to make sure that all the edges are covered with that pencil. Form of a shading, form of tone, but not to go outside. Just good practice as well. And when you're using small circular motion, you do end up slowing down just naturally. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill that gap fill our box up. Now I'm not going to do one box at a time because it won't look natural um, and it won't look very um, gradient. We do want that gradient. Um, range of tones is kind of smoothly blending into one another. So I'm going to go ahead and create some layers now. Start going over it very lightly. If you look at the bottom, look how light my pencil pressure is and I'm just going to go ahead and press it down. I don't move on until my pencil pressure, my pencil layers are actually completing that little section. So if I was to just keep going with that circular motion, look how I've got those circles in there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Look how the circular motion is that. I don't want that. I don't want that at all. If it happens, that's fine. Just go back in and just with a light pencil pressure, just stay on top of it with a light pencil pressure. And then you can eliminate them very, very easily. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. Do the same thing at the bottom and fill those gaps in. Now, as I'm doing that, I'm going to layer again, again and again. If I as many layers as you need, just to make sure it's nicely blended. And I'm making sure that the side of my pencil is actually blunt. Look how blunt that side is. And it's helping me to keep everything nice and smooth. There's no scratchy tones. Got a nice variety of tones there as well. Because I pressed my pencil so hard on the edge, it's allowed me to create a tab as I work through it as well. So I'm just going to fill that out. And it's really important to know how to create a range of tones, especially for our abstract piece for David Hockney. We will be able to apply these skills to our work later on as well, which is what we want. I'm just going to fill those gaps up slightly using really small gentle circular motion and just kind of layer as you work through now i'm going to go ahead and complete the bottom one then we're going to move on to the next as well all right so now that both of those are done we're going to move on to this section here now i want this the light source to kind of come through this way and maybe i can draw an arrow as well to keep it easy um, I want the light source to come this way, which means this will be very dark. I'm going to start off with a medium pressure. As I get to the end, get a little bit lighter as well. You can decide at any point which where you want the light source to come from. But to keep it easy and just to practice those dark, medium and light tones, and just continue to create a tonal gradient as well, just so that it's blending in, or in a direction without it being just one tone. I'm going to go ahead and get this edge to be nice and dark. Look, I'm pressing my pencil in. Nice and dark. And I'm going to go ahead, work diagonally, use that small circular motion just to kind of blend all those tones together. Now, as I'm doing that, I've gone outside the box a little bit. That's okay. Fill in any edges of the gap, create some neatness in your work. And now I'm going to blend that into the top make sure it's nice and light light but it's going to go ahead 
can go very medium but I'm going to keep it nice and light and continue to make it lighter on the edge here as well right now that I've got that dark tone placed here I'm going to get this medium a medium going into light now so I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure this way and start blending it downwards and make it light Right, now you can see that the light source is coming this way, it's nice and dark from here and it's pretty obvious where the shadow lays and where's the highlight. Now I'm going to do the same technique on this side, however I want my light source to come from this angle. You can choose any way, you can choose the one I'm using, that's fine as well. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some pressure this side and make sure to keep this area nice and light, okay? Now that I'm done with my one layer, you can see that it's very dark here, that's extremely light, that I've not added any pencil shading, and the rest is medium. Now what my goal is to make it all blend into one another. So I'm going to add, go back in, apply a little bit of pressure, not too hard, and use circular motion just to blend the dark through the medium, and start making my way by creating more smoother transitions from the dark to more. Remember we are referring back to the tonal strip that we created with dark, medium and light. We did it with the grid without the grid. We're now just trying that out on 3D film. So go ahead. I've added some medium tones at this edge here just because I want my light source to almost come from the front. You can always change your mind. So all I'm going to do now is just blend them together.
Right, and all I've done now is blend all of them together and I'm just going to continue blending it into the white as well. And once I'm done with that, just look how I just close it all up very lightly. And remember, there's no circular motion, circular marks that should be shown. It should all be buffed out with the layering. So that's what I've done. So I'm going to wrap this up and I'm not going to speak much, but I want you to figure out where the light source is coming from in this side. Sorry about the light going in and out, but if you, uh, if I push this up and you can see in the shadow, you can definitely see a lot more range here. So I'm just going to bring that a little bit closer and go ahead and try that. Right, now that I'm done with all the dark range of the tones, medium and light, can you guess where the highlights are coming from? Is it coming from here, 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 or is it coming... That's where the highlight is, and therefore the direction is there, and the shadow is mostly here. And you can see just by using those simple techniques, and I did create a circle before I started, so I knew exactly which area to keep nice and light, you can see how three-dimensional you can make an object look. Okay? Hope that helps.